Hello world, a US nuclear weapons contractor has fallen victim to a ransomware attack and the attackers are threatening to hand the stolen data over to the Russian military. It has emerged that Denmark helped the NSA spy on its European neighbours, and one of the world's largest ransomware gangs has vanished. That's in today's episode of The Week Web, where we break down and dissect cybersecurity related tech news. In a worrying turn of events, a military contractor which works on US nuclear weapons has been the latest domino to fall in the scourge of ransomware sweeping the interwebs. The perpetrators have even threatened to leak captured data to rival military agencies if the victim doesn't pay up. The company at the center of this is Seoul Orions, which in their own words is focused on managing advanced technologies and concepts with strong potential for military and space applications. They're so high tech their website doesn't even load. The ransomware attack seems to have been initiated by the Revel Ransomware Group, which is a Russian cybercrime gang that was also responsible for the recent attack on the world's largest meat supplier, JBS. Nowadays, it's standard practice for ransomware gangs to not only encrypt data locally, but also to exfiltrate it and threaten its release if the ransom remains unpaid. In this particular case, that's very bad news, given a military contractor which works on nuclear weapons is going to house some pretty sensitive data. We don't know to what extent Solarines works on nukes. Maybe they're just responsible for painting the things, in which case there's not much to worry about but I'm guessing that isn't the case. When Solarines was asked about all of this, they gave the very astute and insightful response. We recently determined that an unauthorized individual acquired certain documents from our systems. That's a lot of words without managing to say much. But before you roast them, in fairness, they did go on to clarify that they have no current indication that this incident involves client classified or critical security related information, which is a good sign. However, it's being reported that data has started to be leaked by the ransomware gang, presumably due to non-payment of that ransom. Now I've trawled through Revel's dark web blog and I can't seem to find this leaked data, but I'll take the reports at face value. As it stands, the leaks are limited to payroll info, employee names and social security numbers, which isn't great, but then Again, it's not thermonuclear warhead schematics. There's no evidence that Revel is backed by the Russian government in any way. By all accounts, Revel is in it purely for the money. However, the gang is quoted as saying, we hereby keep rights to forward all the relevant documentation and data to military agencies of our choice. Obviously a direct threat to pass on the stolen data, presumably to Russian military organizations. In international cyber espionage news, Denmark has been accused of assisting the NSA in a mission to spy on the communications of various high-level European politicians. And no, this wasn't a plot to eavesdrop on Belarusian oligarchs or something easily justifiable, but rather an operation targeted against top-level politicians in Sweden, Norway, France and Germany, which are of course meant to be allies of Denmark and the US. Danish media is reporting the story, which references nine anonymous sources which have access to classified information held by the Danish intelligence service, which I'm not even going to try and pronounce, and just refer to as the FE. You see, due to its geography, many undersea cables transmitting data to and from EU countries use Denmark as a kind of landing ground. The FE provided access to these cables to the NSA, which is accused of using special analysis software, X Keyscore, to intercept data, specifically the text messages and phone conversations of prominent EU politicians, including that of the Chancellor of Germany, Angela Merkel. We don't definitively know much about X Keyscore, other than it was developed by the NSA and shared with various allies funnily enough, including Germany. According to Snowden, the software is essentially Big Brother's wet dream. It has the ability to read anyone's email in the world and track people's movements using a digital fingerprint it builds on victims. And that's really just scratching the surface. Its full capabilities would take way too much time to detail in this video. Though in essence, it's a tool used to sift through the gargantuan amounts of metadata which the NSA collects. This whole saga, codenamed Operation Dunhammer, does have a bit of history behind it. Snowden first spilled the beans of the gist of it way back in 2013. Whilst it caused a diplomatic diplomatic row back then, nothing really came of it, and German prosecutors closed the case in 2017 due to a lack of evidence. It's only the emergence of the new revelations implicating Denmark which have resurfaced this case. According to Snowden, then Vice President Joe Biden was, quote, deeply involved in this scandal the first time around. It'll be interesting to see if this opens any rifts. The NSA hasn't commented on these new revelations. European leaders have called it unacceptable and scandalous, among various things. Just words, really, not much in the way of action. However, maybe the reason we're not seeing much in the way of action is because no country is innocent when it comes to eavesdropping. In fact, Germany was accused in 2015 of helping the NSA spy on certain EU companies, one of which, Airbus, filed a criminal complaint against persons unknown over the incident. 
In addition, the UK's GCHQ was implicated in Operation Socialist, the mission which Snowden described as the first documented example to show one EU member state mounting a cyber attack on another, saw UK government spies hack into the Belgian telecom company Belgicom, now rebranded Proximus. Sophisticated malware was installed on Belgicom's computer systems, masquerading as Microsoft software whilst covertly stealing data. Leaked presentation slides marked top secret detailed the objectives of the mission. The aim seems to have been to gain a foothold in Belgicom, which handles communication links with much of the world, as this leaked GCHQ screenshot shows. Point being, everyone seems to be spying on each other, and of course the cases I've mentioned in this segment are really only the tip of the iceberg. There's going to be a whole lot more going on that we'll never hear about. A world's top 10 ransomware gang has mysteriously vanished. In the early hours of last Friday, news website Bleeping Computer received an anonymous email. Pretending to be from the FBI, the email contained a link to a zip file which contained 2,934 decryption keys, mapping to victims of the Avadin ransomware. The keys were tested against a virtual machine encrypted with the malware to verify the authenticity, and they worked. Following this, Avadin's dark website has since become inaccessible. Avadin formally used this website to host the data of victims which refused to pay their ransom. It all kind of sounds like someone infiltrated Avadin, stole the decryption keys, and demolished the website. Though upon further inspection, that doesn't appear to be the case. Bleeping Computer reports that ransomware negotiation firms and incident responders saw a mad rush by Avadin over the past few days to finalize ransom payments from existing unpaid victims and that Avadin has been accepting ransom counteroffers without any pushback. This is highly unusual, and all points to Avadin having circled a date on their calendar on which they wanted to wind down their operations. But why quit at such a moment? After all, ransomware is a good moneymaker. Avadin themselves is one of the largest groups out there. They emerged in the world's top 10 ransomware groups in Q3 last year, and must be making bank. We can only speculate, of course, on why they've decided to shut up shop, though a fair guess is that the increasing heat from law enforcement was a big deciding factor. As I covered in a previous video, the US is starting to fight cybercrime in a similar manner to terrorism, with a newly established dedicated task force based in Washington entrusted with coordinating investigations of large-scale cybercrime. Avadin may have understandably come to the conclusion that now is a good time to give up the trade. They are probably stacked with Bitcoin at this point, might as well just take the W and move on, rather than risk being caught in an upcoming international cybercrime sting and end up being thrown in prison for a decade or two. The ransomware surge we're seeing right now will likely come to an end, or at least a lull, at some points for one reason or another. Best end on a high whilst you can, rather than be caught in its demise. Avadin isn't the first ransomware gang to withdraw from the space. A while ago I covered Phonics Crypto's exit. They also released a trove of decryption keys for free, as well as an apology to all of their victims, signing off with an Einstein quote. No such gesture from Avadin. I suppose if you want to disappear quietly, best not give people a reason to remember you, which would explain Avadin's muted retirement, with no formal send-off other than an anonymous email to an organization they know has the ability to propagate the decryption keys, in a bid to pacify anyone who still has an outstanding grudge against them. If you enjoy this kind of video, make sure to help me out by tickling the like button for the YouTube AI, as well as turn on the sub notifications. If you're looking for something to watch next, go check out my previous video on how embarrassing vulnerabilities in Huawei products went unfixed for months, even after Huawei was warned about them. If you get a lot of value from this series, do consider becoming a channel member. As always, sources will be linked in the video description. Stay tuned for more hacking videos, and have a good one.